Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between Barcelona and Dinamo Kiev. And in this match, Barcelona has won 4-0. It was a very, very entertaining match. There were some slumps that we had to go through, but in the end, Barcelona did win 4-0. This is a type of result that we have been wanting to see for a very, very long time. After going through all these underwhelming games in this game on a Champions League night without the players such as Lionel Messi, De Jong, Ansu Fati, Gerard Piquet, Barcelona were still able to manage to get a win that resulted in a 4-0 win. And so the way that I am going to be organizing this video is that I am going to be talking about the first half, the second half, and then in the end, I'm going to be giving my overall review of this whole game. Starting with the first half, I'm going to be starting with the lineup for today's video. This is the type of lineup where it was expected. We did expect to see a lineup such as this where we did see many young players. We also did expect expect to see Martin Brathwaite, Pedri Trincao, Junior Firpo, and another player named Minguesa, who was the replacement for Gerard Piquet. And the only reason why we had such a lineup like this, it is because there were many players that were injured and some players also needed some rest. So this was the type of match for many youth players to go on the field and prove to Ronald Koeman why they should be on the starting 11, right? What type of value can these players bring on the field? And so starting with the first half, I'm going to be very straightforward with the first half specifically. I I think that the players did not bring enough action on the field, meaning that they had no direction. And to be very honest, the team felt extremely flat during the first half. This truly did look like a match where the players were on the field only for the sake of trying to build chemistry and get to know each other, not for the sake of gaining three points. And it was understandable, right? Because these players were new and they never really had a chance to build some sort of chemistry on the field. And maybe there could have been some miscommunication coming from Ronald Koeman, where the instructions could have been better implemented on the field and so I do think that for the first half specifically it was a very underwhelming performance we wanted to see more things really needed to change and so if there were two problems I could pick out from the first half it would be Felipe Coutinho I do think that even though Coutinho is a great central attacking midfielder in this match Coutinho played as a left wing and because he did play as a left wing he was just not the same player I do think that Coutinho's main position at Barcelona should be as a central attacking midfielder midfielder that is when we do see the best Felipe Coutinho because when he is playing as a central target midfielder he does have more options to play he can play from the right to the left to the center but when he is a left winger his options greatly do minimize and it makes no sense for your options to minimize when your whole game is revolved around creating for the other players the other problem I would like to point out is Junior Firpo this is a player where I don't think he played bad I just don't think that he adds anything on the field when it comes to the attack he adds nothing when it does come to the defending he doesn't add as much the only bright light I did see within this first half was Minguesa I am so impressed by the way Minguesa did play on this field in tonight's match Minguesa is a player that's very well aware of the space that he needs to cover he is a player that does very well in terms of recoveries and clearances and I think that because of the type of display he did put out all of this has to do with him positioning himself in the correct places at the right time and Minguesa does have that. Minguesa has impressed in tonight's game and I do want to see more from this player as we progress through this season. I do expect a player like Minguesa to become a first team player hopefully by the beginning of next season. But as a collective right for Barcelona in the first half I think that this is a team that needed to be changed whether it's the tactics or any substitutions for the second half. Something needed to change because a 0-0 tie against Dinamo Kiev was not enough. So now I do want to talk about the second half and this is where everything truly does explode for Barcelona and you guys know exactly where I'm going to go with this. In the second half, we did not see any changes, but what I believe happened in the second half, it was Koeman re-strategizing his tactics on the field because on the 52nd minute, Serginho Dest has scored for FC Barcelona and because Dest has scored for Barcelona, he is now the first American to score for FC Barcelona. Barcelona and he is the 10th United States national player to score 
in the UCL. And that, my friends, is probably one of the best news we could probably hear in this game. Because the fact that Serginho Dest, a right back from FC Barcelona, opened the scoreline against Dinamo Kiev, that is huge news. I do believe that Serginho Dest is going to be a massive asset for not only the USA national team, but especially for FC Barcelona. Because even taking away the goal from Serginho Dest, Dest still had a very good performance. Dest really did seem like that bright light in the first half and in the second half. And it says here, according to Rack 1, Rack 1 has named Serginho Dest the man of the match in this game. And I'm going to fast forward just a little bit for a second because I do want to talk about a moment which was on the 75th minute. There was a run that Serginho Dest did make. He was very well aware of the space he did have in front of him. Trincao was waiting for Serginho Dest to make that run. Trincao passes to Dest and Dest easily set up Ricky Pouge. But unfortunately, Ricky Pouge did miss that shot. But that is the point. That is what we want to see. It is for Barcelona to be firing on all cylinders. This is something that we did not usually get from Sergio Roberto and sometimes even Nelson Semedo. Dest does this full time. Every time Dest is on the field, he shows why Barcelona did sign him. He showed why he is worth 25 million euros. This is a player that does want to win. And so I'm very, very impressed with the type of performance Dest has put out in today's game. Now going back to the 57th minute, I do want to talk about one player that was not expected to stand out in this game and that was Martin Brathwaite. Martin Brathwaite in this match has scored two goals and provided one assist against Dinamo Kiev. And who would have thought, right? Who would have thought that Martin Brathwaite out of all players was going to score two goals and provide one assist? These are the type of numbers that Lionel Messi only puts out in one game. And I'm so glad to see that, right? I'm so glad to, I am so glad to see Martin Brathwaite step up and solidify a win for Barcelona. Since the the day he was signed on January 2020, it really did seem like Martin Brathwaite was only going to become a meme for Barcelona. Everyone was calling him the next El Phenomeno, which is Ronaldo. They were calling him Lord Brathwaite. So many things, right? But I think that Martin Brathwaite has proved in tonight's game that he can show up in these important moments and that he can solidify a game when Barcelona cannot solidify a win in a match. And so I do applaud Martin Brathwaite for bringing such a great performance in the second half. And I also do want to applaud Ronald Koeman because to be very honest this is all we want to see I don't care who scores I don't care if it's Junior Firpo Martin Brathwaite Elena Pjanic I really don't care who scores against any team if you can make any player score in these important moments that is all we ask for because that is going to help Barcelona as a collective to move forward and the fact that Ronald Koeman has switched this around before the second half after seeing such a underwhelming first half we have to give some praise towards Ronald Koeman because this was a game that is going to be talked about all week and then later in the game we have seen two substitutions that really stood out which was Ricky Puj a player that we have been dying to see since this season has started I was so happy to see Ricky Puj put on that shirt step on the field and create for all of his teammates the other substitution that we do need to talk about is Conrad De La Fuente Conrad De La Fuente has made his debut for Barcelona which again as a United States fan and for the people who are watching me that's from the USA, this is a huge moment for the national team because we did see Conrad De La Fuente and Serginho Dest finally play right next to each other in a UCL match. And I was also really impressed by the way we did see Pedri and Ricky Puj work together. I was dying to see what a midfield of Pedri and Puj would look like and we did see that against Dinamo Kiev and they did extremely well. And to top it all off, Antoine Griezmann scored his goal on the 90th minute. And so here's going to be my overall view of this game. I am impressed by what Ronald Koeman showed on the field that he is capable enough to turn a game around within the second half I honestly did think and many people did think that this was going to be a match where Barcelona was going to win maybe 1-0 maybe 2-1 and just come out with another underwhelming performance but not only did we win in this game but we did see many youth players show why they could be the future of FC Barcelona I think that leaving this match, many players are going to be leaving with smiles. They are going to be leaving with confidence. And this was a game where Barcelona did show that they do not always have to depend on the big time players. They can bring results and they can get things done. So here are going to be my three standout players for today's game. Number one, I do think it's going to be Minguesa. I am extremely impressed with his performance. I do expect to hear more from this player and see more from this player within the coming months. The second player who did stand out in this match was Sergio. Dest and the third final player is going to be 
Martin Brethwaite. He did come out from this match scoring two goals and one assist. And I do want to give one honorable mention and some light towards Elenia. I love the way that Elenia was covering the ball, creating for the players. And so I do want to give my praise towards Elenia and props towards his performance. So that'll be it for today's Barcelona post-match review. Again, it was a very, very great match and a great second half display. Let me know what you did like, what did you not like, who were your key players, and what was your favorite moment in this match between Dinamo Kiev and FC Barcelona. Again, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.